Does anybody know how to uh, how to say hallelujah in in Japanese? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, I don't know. How about uh, how about Spanish? Does anybody know how to say hallelujah in Espanol? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How about how about uh, how about uh, German? Chinese. How about Chinese? Ch hallelujah. Hallelujah. What? You mean that word is universal? You mean that word goes across all, every language and every tongue? Come on, somebody. So what does hallelujah mean? It means a thousand praises. Is there not a greater word to be universal than a thousand praises. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad I I can I, I can speak every language when I say hallelujah. Amen. Every language, it doesn't matter. Amen. I'm so grateful, amen, that I can sing a thousand praises to my God. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. Well, it's been a good week already. Amen. And uh, 
we're only halfway through it. Amen. Looking forward to Friday. Amen. And I'm looking forward to Sunday. Amen. Some say, well, why would you look forward to Friday? You know, that's the day Jesus died on the cross. Yeah. That's the day everything happened. Amen. Amen. I'm looking forward to Friday. I thank God for Friday. Amen. I thank God for Sunday too, but I thank God for Friday. Amen. 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 Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you for this day, Lord. We're so grateful, Father God, for your power and your anointing, Father. Thank you for your grace, Father. Have your way in this place tonight, Father God. Let your power fall, Father God. Let your power fall on us, God. We honor you. Holy Spirit, we yield to you. And let you have all authority in this house, God. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen, amen. Let's worship. Amen. amen. Why don't you turn around and shake hands with two or three people? Amen. It's good to have you tonight. Amen. this song has been going over and over in my mind, but I don't really have the words in front of me, and it's something I'm pulling out of the backside, but, and if I don't remember all the words, that's all right, but, you know, what a great, what a great week to do a reflection of our own hearts, our own attitudes and our motives, and, and just recheck ourselves, amen, because Friday's coming, but Saturday, I mean, Friday, how'd that, how'd that go? It's Friday pretty soon, but Sunday's coming. Amen. He is, he's not in, he's not in a manger. He's not on the cross. <laughs> Come on, he's not in the tomb. Come Amen. on, he is our risen Savior. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but I mean, I love Sundays, but I just love Wednesdays because we can just be us. Amen. I hate to say this, but the, we don't have looky loos on on Wednesday nights. We're just able to just worship Him. Amen. I've been around Pastor way too long, huh? Yep. He's rubbing off on me. So, and what I mean is those that just come because it's Sunday. Amen. We love our looky loos. Amen. But we come Wednesday because we need to worship together, amen, and to hear his word corporately because you cannot trade that for online. You cannot trade it for online, amen. Can we just, can we just lift our, our, our hands and, and let's just praise him for a moment right now. Whatever, whatever you're thankful for right now, just give him praise. Maybe it's been a hard week, but Father, we all have something to praise you for. Father, you woke us up this morning. And Father, we thank you, Father, Lord, for all you're doing. We give you all the praise, Jesus. Lord, we love you, Lord. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I give you glory and honor. Jesus. 
can we just lift our voices and give him praise right now? Father, Lord, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I praise your name. Lord, we praise your name. Lord, I glorify your name. I glorify your name. I glorify your name.
I know this is going to be a little bit different, and, but I really feel led to do this. I would like, uh, I'd like Brother Rick and Sister Kathy just to step out into the aisle, if you will. And then, baby, will you take this? I'll take some oil. I know it's already been, <laughs> I know it's been anointed, but, you know, Brother Rick and Sister Kathy, they're farmers. And be just a minute, baby. And we were talking to them the other day, and you know, there's a lot of things going on in our government that is, it's affecting our farmers. For one, they're holding water back from our farmers. And then, you know what? We have no problem with raising, you know minimum wage for anybody to make a good living but when they do it when there is such a crisis in our economy right now when everything is sky high and pastor says you know I love what he says he says usually what is going to happen in the physical will be what is going to follow in the spiritual and where this come from is when we first sang that first verse tonight it says you invite me to sit down at your table where I can taste and I can eat well there's a reason why the enemy is trying to take y'all know what I'm talking about he's trying to steal the food that comes from our farmers you say well I don't need anything from a far from the farmers wait until it's all dried up if it happens and in Jesus name it's not gonna happen our farmers will not go belly up. So Brother Rick and Sister Kathy, I would like you guys to stand in place, not only of your own farm, but of every farmer in this region, okay? Because we're gonna come against what the enemy's trying to do. Because see, if he's trying to, if he's trying to stop the food from us physically, he's trying to rob us, it's what he's trying to do. And you know what, the water comes from him. The land comes from him. So the enemy's got to go. Come on, the enemy has got to go. And, and the, the governor being has to take their hands off of the control. We're probably going to get kicked off today because that's all right. I'm not getting political. I am getting spiritual here. Come on, I'm just telling you what's going on right now. 
But now I want everyone, and this is really dear to my heart, because my mom and dad came to Shafter, California to work the fields. Yeah, more people than just your, our parents walked, they did that. They worked the fields, and I, ha and I was so excited because we've been helping Jerry out, and I saw a picture of the potato shed that I worked for my summers during high school. Amen. I worked, I lasted one day out in the, I lasted one day at the vineyards because my father said, you need to get a job. And he goes right over there, right across the street. That's where you can get a job. And they were laying down grapes for raisins. It was hot. It was sticky. And there were stickers. I lasted one day. I walked in the house and I said, he goes, well, how was your first day? And I go, it was my first and my last he goes, no, I told you you got to work. And I said, I'm going to the potato sheds where there's a cooler and there's water. That's where I'm going tomorrow. So you know what? I want anyone that works in agriculture at all, if your job works in agriculture, I want you to stand in the aisle as well. Come on, we're going to band together, amen? Come on. If you work the fields, come on. Don't be ashamed. Hey, hey we're glad, amen, amen. It takes all of us. Come on, we don't want we don't want pickers, automatic pickers to take our jobs. Come on now. The Bible says if you don't work, you don't eat. That's what the Bible says. So you know what? Can we band together? All of you, can you guys, since there's just a few of you kind of gather around Brother uh, Rick and Sister Kathy tonight. I hope this is all right, but it, that's all right if it's not. It's all good because you know what? Let me tell you something. This is all of our, it has to do with every one of us in this house. Amen. Let us either go up and lay your hands on them or stretch forth your hand tonight. Amen. We're going to come against the opposition. Right now, my Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come against you, Father. Lord, we are your children. You say, Father, Lord, in your word that you will never see the righteous forsaken or the seed begging for bread. And Father, Lord, right now, in the name of Jesus, Lord, loose, loose right now, Father Lord, every farmer, Father Lord Jesus. Give them water, Father Lord. Bring water. You say that you will make streams in the desert. And Father Lord, you say we have not because we ask not. And Father Lord, tonight we are asking, Father Lord, loose, loose it right now in the name of Jesus. Father Lord, because we know when we sit at the table, Father Lord, what an enemy is trying to do in the in the real world, in the in the physical world that he's trying to stop up in the spiritual world and it won't happen right now father we glorify your name we give you all the praise father lord let spring start floating up father lord where they don't even know where the water is coming from father lord jesus oh you are in control and father we thank you in advance Father, for every farmer that you will give a crop father lord that will give and produce father lord like never before Lord, let them have employees, Father Lord, that are honored to work for you, Father Lord Jesus. Father Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, we give you all the praise. We give you all the glory, Father Lord, because you are in control. Father Lord, the government is on your shoulders. And right now, Father Lord, we reach out to you and we praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We praise you, Lord. We give you all the glory and all the honor, Father Lord Jesus. We will not be defeated, Father Lord. Every farmer will not go under, Father Lord. They will flourish, Father Lord, in the middle of the storm, Father Lord, right now in the name of Jesus. Give Brother Rick and all of his employees and the whole farm, Father Lord, give them strength, Father Lord, in every farm that is re represented in this, in this region, Father Lord Jesus. Right now, Father Lord, right now, Father Lord, in your name, Jesus. Father Lord, right now, Jesus, give us strength, Father Lord Jesus. Lord, give us joy where the weariness is trying to take over right now, Father Lord Jesus. Let us rejoice and be glad in you, Father Lord Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. We glorify your name, Jesus. Brother Rick, I see, I see you taking that red cloth and putting it in y'all's checkbook. Come on. Come on, amen. Can we just raise our hands and give him praise right now? Father, Lord, we praise your name.
Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Last four words of that song. Are sometimes the hardest ones to believe. He will never fail. He will never fail. I'm telling you, when you get that in your spirit, and you realize that no matter what life throws at you, he will never fail. When you begin to understand that and when you begin to walk in that kind of an attitude, you are unstoppable. There is nothing, nothing. Like Paul said, I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor angels nor principalities will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. All we have to do is amen, believe that he will never fail. Amen. Amen, amen. Why don't you uh, shake somebody's hand before you're seated tonight. Amen. God bless you as you're seated. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hey, before our young people take off, I want to make just a couple of quick announcements, amen. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows that uh, Prophet Angel is still on, amen. I know I haven't been announcing that very much, but he is still on. He's still coming the 15th, 16th, and I believe on the 15th and 16th, is that correct, right? He is coming on a Monday and Tuesday, the 15th and 16th. Um, and for some reason, the list is missing. So if you signed up for that and you still want to go, make sure you put your name. Make sure you see uh, Sister Martha or Sister Dory or one of the ladies back in the back. They will put your name back on the list. We want to make sure that we get, um, we need to get 100 people, all right, uh, to come. And I'm, I'm going to spread this out. I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, you know, kind of get this out on social media and all of that, amen. Um, the price for the class is $100, okay? Um, and that comes with a certificate, and, you know, I believe he's going to do some impartation and things like that. Now, here's the other piece of that, okay? Um, that Wednesday night, the 17th, all right, he will be with us in church, okay? Now, here's the rule. I don't want you to invite anybody else. It's for us, okay? To, uh, you know, l this last time we had Prophet Angel here, he was just, you know, he was here, and we had people that were just pushing their way to the front and doing all kinds of other things. And it's like, man, this is our house. Amen? You're my people. Amen? You're, you're, you're my family. Familia, amen, and so I'm not trying to be mean, I'm not trying to be hateful, I'm not trying to be anything else, but I just want you to know that, you know what, we are not going to allow anybody else to come in except for our house, okay? I haven't worked that out yet, exactly how I'm going to do that, okay? But I think this is how I'm going to do it, and it's don't tell anybody. Everybody hold your hand up like this. No, 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 not peace. Like this, okay? Yeah, okay, that's your promise, all right? That's your promise, okay? So Sunday, Sunday, April the 14th, we will have red tickets on Sunday morning. And if you're here on Sunday morning the 14th, you will get, be given a ticket. And that's how you get in on Wednesday night. Okay? Now, if the house is packed on Sunday morning, on the 14th, I'm going to know that y'all went and told somebody. 
And I'm going to go, hey, hi, how are you? Hey, who invited you this morning? And I'm going to know. And you won't get a ticket. <laughs> ma, ma, ma. But that will be your ticket. Amen? All right. Yes. You, everybody can buy a ticket for the conference. All right. Everybody can buy a ticket for the conference. And we want as many people here. I'm not trying to, you know, say nobody, if you're not in this church, you can't go. But I, what I don't want, man, is I don't want it to be like it was last time where, you know, people were fighting and arguing and complaining about, oh, I have to get up and go find my husband. And, and then, you know, we, we, you know, it's like when somebody takes their seat and it's like we get a call and it's like, I, I'm sorry. You know, I apologize. I know you're part of our church, but I just, you know, it's like people are just kind of, some people are ruthless. Christians are ruthless, man. Man, they need a Boaz in their life. Amen, amen, amen. See, Boaz was ruthless until he found Ruth, right? Amen, amen, amen. But hey, I want to make mention, make sure everybody knows that. All right. Um, listen, we're not like I said. We're not trying to exclude anybody. The cost is a hundred dollars. That doesn't go to us. That goes to the Prophet Angel. Right, so, um, you know, if you want to put your name on the list and say, "Hey, we're going to pay," if if you come in on that night and you haven't paid yet, we can't let you in, because that's a cost that we have to incur. That we have to pay that from the church. Okay, so I just want you to know that. All right, and you know, we're uh, as a church, we're going to pay for several people as well, but but we're also we also want to be very mindful of that. Okay. All right, you all okay with that? Amen. I just wanted to get that out there. Let that, you know, kind of. Um, tomorrow is our food giveaway. What, 2.30, 2 o'clock? 2 o'clock? Be down here at 2 o'clock. Amen. Come down here. Hey, you know what? You get to hang out with me. How cool is that, huh? Right? Amen. You know, and Brother Vince and Brother Andy. Amen. Sister Gail. Amen. Most of the time, Brother Billy. Amen. You get to hang out with all us guys, man. Now, 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 you know, hang out. Now, who wouldn't want to hang out with guys like us? Amen. Amen. So, so come on out for food giveaway. Amen. That's two o'clock tomorrow. If you want to come early in the morning, you're welcome to do so. It starts around eight, eight fifteen, something like that. If you come, you'll get a donut. Amen. Just one. That's all you get. One. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. So, but come on out. Amen. We'll unload the truck tomorrow morning, but then at 2 o'clock, we'd like to have as many people here as possible. I know some of you young people are out uh, on spring break. Amen. What a great time. Amen. To come out and, you know, go back to school and say, I volunteered at the church. Amen. Amen. Some of you, man, maybe are, are looking for a place to volunteer so we can sign a paper. I'm just saying, right? If you need that, we can sign a paper for you saying, hey, I volunteered for the church. Amen. And, it, you know, and that's legal and it can hold up in court. Come on. Amen. We've done that before. Amen. <laughs> Time or two. Amen. Amen. So come on out, though, and give us a hand tomorrow. Amen. Amen. And uh, Friday night. Ooh. Friday night, ain't no party like a Holy Ghost party because the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Mm. You see the dip? Y'all see the dip? I did the dip, huh? Y'all don't know nothing about no Pentecostal dip. Mm. <laughs> Amen. We're going to have a good time around here on Friday night. We are going to start at 630, and we're going to end when God's done. Amen. It's going to be good. Pastor Keith Long will be with us as well. And Sister Tamara Long, amen. Some of you don't realize that Sister Tamara, Tamara Long is walking today because she got healed right here at the church. Because somebody was willing to war. Amen. Right here at this house. Amen. How many were here that day? 
man. We helped her on the stage. And she danced off. And she's still walking perfect today. Amen. Amen. So they're going to be here. We love Pastor Keith and Sister Long. Amen. Um, you know what? Friday is his birthday, Pastor Keith's birthday. Amen. Uh, so praise God for that. And then Joe and Caleb will be with us as well. They're going to be doing worship. And we told them, you know, look, um, just praise, just worship. We, we're not really worried about, you know, who preaches what and what you preach and all that. If you want to exhort a little bit, that's fine. We're okay with just having worship. We're okay with just having a night of worship and praise uh, to our Father. And I know they're looking forward to being here as well. They've never been here before. Amen. So we're looking forward to them coming. Amen. You know, please pray for us. I know we have been advertising the Bosmans coming, but Dr. Bosman got pneumonia a few weeks ago. Um, and he it really brought him down. It really, I mean, did a toll on his body. Well, when you're 82 years old, you know, and you've you've traveled, you know, abroad many many times a year, Amen. Uh, you know, it it does have a toll. It takes a toll, and so he is not ready to travel yet, Amen. But we are praying for healing. He's going to let us know if they're not able to come in April, they're going to come in June or whenever we can get them, Amen. Uh, they will be here, Amen. They will be coming. They want to come to this church. You know, Sister Ann does not travel with them often. Um, she hardly ever, actually. She stays home. But this is one church where she says, I will not miss this house. Amen. So we're looking forward to that. Amen. <laughs> Amen. And and then also, tomorrow night we have a, a women's thing. What time does that start, sis? 6.30? Okay, so 6.30 we have a women's, women's fellowship. Okay. Now listen, if you come and help in the food drive, amen, you can bring a salad because you're probably going to get a bunch of lettuce and all kinds of other stuff. You can just bring your own salad right there, right fresh from the farm. No, just kidding. Just kidding. Amen. Bring your own dinner. B-Y-O-D, all right? Bring your own dinner. Hey, I want to let you all know, too, some of you young people maybe don't know this, um, and all you parents as well, Pastor Augie and Jessica Rodriguez, um, they are the pastors in Delano. All right, they are now our uh, young people's leaders for Central Cal Pentecostal Church of God. Amen. So there's going to be a whole different, sh there's going to be a whole shift of leadership in the camp this year. Amen. Um, we were already asked as the kids minister for the kids ministry, we were already asked to come and do kids ministry for them again this year. Amen. And we are going to look for volunteers that want to come and help. Amen. Uh, not eat, help, all right? Not just, you know, watch, help, amen? Um, because, you know what, this is a big deal for us, amen? Um, I believe it's it's part of the, the prophetic word of resource for us, amen? And so I'm looking forward to that, amen? Amen, so are you guys, are you guys good? Are you guys going next door? Okay, we love you young people, amen? And uh, we will we will see you all next time. Amen. Let's have our ushers come. Don't forget the picnic on Saturday. If you're not there, I'm going to come get you. <clears throat> 10 o'clock. The men can be there at 845, 930, 830. Amen. Amen. I, I believe, Sister Crystal, do you have something tonight you want to share with us? Come on, sis. Amen. If you're ready to do that, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we love you. We thank you for this opportunity to give. Father God, I pray your blessing on the gift as well as the giver, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, sis. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen, amen. Hello, hello. So, um, <clears throat> so, uh, let's 
for a while now. I've been praying for my family and uh, I could kind of even remember when the shift happened of like, you know, having my prayer for my family be based on like worry and, and uh, you know, uncertainty and that shift from just sheer faith and a little prayer that I encourage you guys to, to you know, talk to the Lord about if you guys have unsaved uh, loved ones. We probably all do, we all do. Um, it's, um, the Holy Spirit said, he said, Lord, I lay down the salvation of my family down at your feet because there is no better or higher place. And you know, just, just praying that and praying that with faith, knowing that he will do it because he's a promise keeper. And you know, oh, my sister, she came, um, she came to this church and a prayer of hers got answered and so did mine. You know, mm -hmm. uh, a prayer or a prayer of a, uh, just to see the providence of the Lord. And I don't want to give too much information about her, but she ended up getting a car and she got her ID, TMI. But um, she, uh, yeah, so her prayer got answered and so did mine. So she's seen the providence of the Lord. And with time, you know, I, I say this often, but it just, it just, she doesn't have to be like, for me to know that a seed has been planted, you know? But enough of that, enough of that. I want to dedicate this uh, poem that I wrote to the Lord and share it to the body of Christ, so. Okay, so here's a little key, a key word. When you guys hear, death has been defeated, I want you to just hallelujah, hallelujah, like if your salvation depended on it, okay? Amen. Okay, <laughs> so, so. <laughs> amen, so it goes. <clears throat> Death has been defeated, okay? Hallelujah. All right, all right, all right. Let's just practice round. Okay, so. <clears throat> Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. <clears throat> okay. I'm far from perfect, but close to you. Holy Spirit, do what only you can do. You see my heart's posture, the desire for an increased fire you are eternal you before anyone i admire so jesus my king to you i sing you are worth surrendering my whole being on you i can lean because of your sacrifice i'm now made clean glory to god i've been set free jesus your mercy and your grace they never stop chasing so I am content in any obstacle that I may be facing. You took this pain, comforted me, and said never to be the same Jehovah Rapha. You gave me a new name. No longer timid. I'm no longer bound. A new creation. I have been found. Death is defeated. Hallelujah! <laughs> In heavenly places, I am seated. Luke 10, 19, the enemy's plan has been deleted. <laughs> Jesus Christ of the Bible, expose so that I may rebuke having any idol. I love you, Abba Father. I thank you. I praise you for revival. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. 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 Wow. That's good. Death has been defeated. Amen. How many are glad that death has been defeated? Amen. My, my, my. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. 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 Hey, I know it's uh, Wednesday night, and I know it's kind of getting a little bit late, but... Um, I just want to talk to you just for a couple of minutes. I don't want to keep you uh, very long, but, um, you know, I, I just, uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about, uh, I, I would be amiss if we didn't talk about the cross, amen? Um, you know, I said this on Sunday, and I'll say it, you know, till the cows come home. Easter is the most important day in a Christian's life. Amen? But see, Andre Crouch says it like this. You know, I love this song. I wish I could sing. I'd sing it. But, um, but the song goes like this. It says, if heaven 
was never promised to me. Neither God's promise to live eternally. It's been worth just having the Lord in my life. Amen. Living in a world of darkness, but he brought me to light. Amen. If there were never any streets of gold, come on. Amen. Uh, nor God's, uh, I don't know the rest of it anyway, but, but uh, um, where we'll never grow old. Amen. It's been worth just having the Lord in my life. But, but understand, Easter is our promise, amen, of heaven. You all understand that? The Bible says that Jesus became the first fruit of the resurrection. Amen? In other words, he resurrected first, and then after that, people were lining up. That's why when you hear, when you see the, 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 the Bible in the book of Matthew, I believe it's Matthew chapter 26 or 27. Um, anyway, when you see when Jesus rose from the dead, or when Jesus went to the cross, the Bible says that the rock split and many of the saints had, were walking around. Could you imagine that? Seeing, you know, Jeremiah, seeing, you know, Isaiah, seeing, you know, Abraham walking around the city. And you're like, whoa, what, what's he doing here, right? But, but understand, he became the first fruit of the resurrection. I love the, the, the book, um, Sister Martha, don't let me forget to get you that book, but I love the book by Gene Edwards. It's one of my favorite books, especially this time of the year. Um, it's called The Day I Was Crucified. Because here's why I love the book. Because Jesus is talking to the thief on the cross. And he's talking to him and he's saying, you know what, today you will be with me in paradise. Okay, he says that to him, right? So all of a sudden, they're, they're, because the, understand that, that it's, a, it's a story about the cross in Jesus' words, okay? But there's a chapter in there where it stops, and all of a sudden it's the thief on the cross who is going to heaven. And the angels are like, who is this guy? Who is this guy? And he's like, it's really real? I, I, he told me I would be here. Is it really real? And there's this conversation between him and the angels, amen? And it's so powerful because it's like, could you imagine being the first person to be in the kingdom? Could you imagine that? And be like, yeah, really? And the angels are like, oh, my gosh, who is this guy, man? He looks like, was he the thief? Was he the guy that, you know, was he that guy that, that robbed and stole and all that? What's he doing here? The other angels, the angel of reason kind of said, well, you know what? He said that there would be a time when his bride would come. I'm telling you, amen, it's powerful, it's powerful. Y'all got to get the book, amen, uh, powerful book, um, you know, but, but understand, I love that because when Jesus went to the cross, amen, there were so many other benefits. Now, resurrection is great. Don't get me wrong. I want to go to heaven. I'm, I'm like Andre. If heaven was never promised to me, but it is, amen. Neither God's promised to live eternally, but it is, amen. I, I, I'm like Andre Crouch, but, but understand, but those things are promised to us, and that is what happened on Easter morning when Jesus rose from the dead, amen. amen? And because he lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen? Right? Because he lives, I know that, hey, you know, one day I'm going to be out of here. Amen? One day I'm going to vomito para my real casa. Amen? Right? The, 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 real, the real casa, the real house. Amen? Um, because I'm, I'm just a pilgrim passing through. But, but understand, amen, you know, if it had not been for the cross, if it had not been for the cross, the beating, the pulling of the hair, the, 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 the shame, the reproach, the, the, I don't, you know, I think the only movie that I know that really depicted kind of what could have happened that day is the one that, that um, yeah, the passion of the Christ. Um, I believe that that's probably the closest they can get to what really happened that day because it was brutal. It was, it was, it was terrible. It was an awful thing. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm glad that Easter is not all we get. Aren't you all glad of that? I mean, Easter is important, but, I, but I'm glad that, that, that Easter is not 
just what we get because understand, you know, we may never ever on this side of glory understand the work of the, on the cross, the work that happened on the cross, amen? We, we, we may never understand what Isaiah really truly meant when he said he was wounded for our transgressions and bruised for our iniquities. We may never really understand all of those things, but, but understand this, amen? From the beginning of time, there has always needed to be a sacrifice. There always had to be a sacrifice. Even when Adam and Eve, amen, were in the Garden of Eden and they felt shame because they were naked, amen, and God said, who told you you were naked? What did he do? He killed an animal. He didn't just kill it because he needed the skin. He killed it because he needed a sacrifice, amen? And so from the beginning of time, if you look at time and you look through the Bible, you will see that, that all through the Bible there, are, there, there, there has to be a sacrifice, amen? What the Bible says in, in Isaiah 53, it says, all we like sheep have gone astray, amen? We have left God's path to follow our own, yet the Lord laid on him the sins of us all in the New Living Testament, Amen? But it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, everybody say it's an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. Look at your neighbor and say, I'm one of them. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plans will prosper in his hands. When he sees all that is accomplished by his anguish, he will be satisfied. And because of his experience, my righteous servant will make it possible for many to be counted righteous. Look at your neighbor and say, that's me. For he will bear all their sins. That was Isaiah. That was Isaiah. A thousand years, or almost a thousand years before Jesus ever walked the face of the earth, Isaiah said that. Amen. So, so really, I mean, if you look at, at, at the Bible, you will see this common thread or, 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 you know, I love the story of Rahab the harlot. And one of these days I'm going to preach this because it's interesting that Matthew, in the book of Matthew, he talks about three, he names three women, three women in the genealogy of Jesus, right? Who are they? One of them is... Actually, I, uh, I'm drawing a blank now of her name, but one of them is, is, was um, Isaac's uh, daughter-in-law who pretended to be a harlot. The other one was Rahab. And the other one was Ruth, right? So two harlots and an outcast. Think about that, amen? That may be the title of my message, amen? But, but understand... Ever since then, amen, when Moses and, and at the Passover, when he, when he was at the Passover and, 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 and he, 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 had to, uh, he had to slaughter a lamb and like uh, Pastor, how many enjoyed our, evangel or our missionary last Sunday? Wasn't that great? Amen. But when he did a sacrifice, when, he, when Moses did the sacrifice, he had to take a, a perfect lamb, amen, and sacrifice that. And every year they had to do that because of the atonement, amen, because it was an atonement. Now, Jesus said, I come to give you the remission of sins, which means it's taking away. Atonement meant to cover. Amen. He said, I'm no longer covering your sin. I'm taking your sin away. Amen. But understand, every time we, you read something in the Bible that's a messianic prophecy, when you see Moses in the Passover, you see the bitter water made, made, uh, made sweet. Now, you know, he could have said, like, like he did to uh, um, Elisha, he could have said, hey, throw some salt in the water and it'll make it sweet. But what did he choose? He chose a tree. He said, because of the tree, your water, the, that which was bitter is going to be sweet. Amen? And so there's all these different types of Jesus, of the Messiah coming and, and, and you know, making our, our, uh, our life better. Amen? Uh, the, I love this one. The Bible says that, you know, what they would do, what they would have to do, there was this thing called the scapegoat. Anybody know what the scapegoat was? Amen? The scapegoat was a goat they had to take two goats, and one of them would be killed, and the other one would get 
to go home or get to go free. And they would take one goat and they would, they, they would take the, the two goats and then the priest would l- allow one to go and to, and, and to be released. But the other one, he had to put his hands on his head and cut his neck and, and allow him to bleed out right there in the altar. Amen. I love that for two reasons, right? One is there was a scapegoat. There was somebody that got away. Amen. Because of the blood of one. Amen. Amen. The other one got away. Come on, somebody. Amen. But, but I, love this, I love this analogy as well because what he did was he literally said, now you need to feel the pain of what is being taken away. He said, I want you to put your hand on, the, on his head and cut the, cut the neck. He said, because I want you to be close to it. I want you to see and feel exactly what sin feels like. Amen. And so Jesus was, you know, Jesus was a type of our scapegoat. Amen. He was our, he, we were the scapegoat and he was the lamb that was sacrificed. Amen. But all throughout the scripture, you see Jesus as a, as a, a the lamb of God. Remember when John the Baptist said, behold the lamb, which taketh away the sin of the world. He could have said, hey, there's my cousin Jesus. He could have said anything. Here, there's the carpenter's son. But what did he say? Behold the Lamb of God, which takes away the sin of the world. You know, did you all know this? That on the very day that, 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 that Jesus was crucified, amen, was the very day that, that the Passover happened in the book of Exodus. The very day, all right? On that very day, Moses took a lamb. Every, every lamb. every household had a lamb to themselves, but it had to be a lamb without blemish. They had to slaughter the lamb, and they had to eat it with haste. Remember that? And they did that at, at this hour called twilight. Are you all with me? Okay. They did it at the hour of twilight, which was around 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Amen. And so understand, when Jesus died on the cross, the Bible says that at twilight... He gave up the ghost. Amen? In other words, he was slain at the very same time that, that 4,000 years before that. Amen? He was slain at the very same time that that would have happened 4,000 years before that when the Passover. Amen? <laughs> and so, so when you understand all that thing, man, you will see. I, I love the scarlet sash, the scarlet, uh, the scarlet rope, right, that that Rahab, that's where I was going a minute ago, but Rahab threw down a scarlet rope, right? And that signified, when they went around Jericho, that signified, hey, she gets to go free because she hid the spies. You remember the story? All right, it was a red scarlet, uh, a scarlet sash or cord that she let out of her house, amen? But understand this, I love this, because there is a scarlet th- cord that runs throughout the whole Scripture, there is a scar. If you read the Bible from front to back, amen, and, and you just begin to study it and you mark off every time you see Jesus, amen, you'll have your Bible marked up, amen. From Genesis all the way to Revelation, amen, there are times when you see Jesus in the type or the thing that is happening, that scarlet thread, amen. Why couldn't it have been a purple thread? Why not a yellow one, amen? Why not an orange one? But it was a scarlet thread. It was a red thread. And, and what Jesus, what the Lord was saying right there was, listen, there's getting ready to be a scarlet thread that's not just going to save a prostitute, but it's going to save the nation. Amen. It's going to save the world. Amen. Are you all with me? Amen. And so, so I, I love this, man. Um, there's a scripture in Galatians. Um, Galatians chapter 4. I'm reading out of the New Living Testament tonight, but it says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman, subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. Amen. I love that because it says, so when the right time came. Amen. Understand, man, you know, if you look at that scripture and you look at it through the course of time, all right, you look at it in in the course of time, all right, 
before the Romans took ownership or took leadership of Israel, amen, I know there was the 400 years of silence. If you read your history about that, the Maccabees, you know, revolted, and there was all these other things that happened in that place, but all of a sudden the, Roman took o- the Romans took over, all right? Well, guess why? Because the Romans crucified people. Before that, there was no crucifixion. Before that, they didn't have, that was not a way for people to die. Now they just got more demented as time went on. They just got more demented and more demented and more demented because after a while, you'll see in the early church that some of the disciples were dressed in, in clothes of, of like skins of, of lions and skins of deer and skins of, uh, of animals. And all of a sudden, they were just made to go out in front of a bunch of a den of lions and be eaten. They just got more demented and more demented as time went by, amen? Uh, you know, look at the, the John the, the Revelator, amen? John the Revelator was, was uh, tarred and feathered. He literally was dipped in hot tar, amen? And they put feathers on him, amen? And he didn't die. Are you all with me? Amen? So they said, man, this joker ain't going to die. Let's send him to Patmos. And they sent him out to Patmos, and that's where he got the revelation of Jesus Christ that he began to write. But see, understand, they got more demented and more demented. But before that, it had to be just the right time for Jesus to come. It had to be a time where, hey, you know what? Right now, in this, in this hour, they crucify. They crucify men. They crucify criminals for what they've done. Amen? And so he came at just the right time. Amen? And when he came, he came to free us, amen, from our sin. Amen? And understand, you know, I, I mean, I could go on and on. I got more notes than I, I got time. But, but um, I love this. This is in the book of Hebrews. I'm just going to read just a couple of little things, and then I'm going to, I'm going to uh, skip over to the Passion Translation in Colossians. But it says, Under the old system, the blood of goats and bulls and the ashes of a heifer could cleanse people's bodies from ceremonial impurity. Just think how much more the blood of Christ will purify our consciences from sinful deeds so that we can worship the living God. For the pow- by the power of the eternal spirit, Christ offered himself to God as a perfect sacrifice for our sin. That is why when he is the one who mediates a new covenant between God and people so that all who are called can receive the eternal inheritance God has promised for them. For Christ died to set them free from the penalty of the sin they had committed under that first covenant. Now when someone leaves a will, it is necessary to prove that that person who made it is dead. The will goes into effect only after the person's death. Now let me explain to you what happened here. Because see, Jesus had a will. God had a will for his children. And that will was no more sickness. That will was no more pain. That will was that that healing was the children's bread. That will was that we would be the head and not the tail, above and beneath, amen? That was the will that was written on our behalf, amen? But in order for that will to take effect, there had to be a death. And it was the death of Jesus that it, that instituted that will and made that will relevant, amen? Made that will to where it was something that, that was now in process, amen? And so understand, when he went to the cross, again, I'm, I'm going to quote Gene Edwards' book. I love this book, and t- I'm telling you. Um, but Gene Edwards, I love the, the time when Jesus is hanging on the cross, And Jesus is hanging on the cross there, and he says, okay, sickness, come. You're coming with me. Depression, I'm taking you with me. Come on, amen? Come on, fear. Come on. Get up here. Get up here on my shoulders. Come on. 
pain, sorrow. Come on, sickness. Come on, iniquity. Come on, come on, sin. Just come on over. I'm taking you with me to the cross. And Jesus began to cry out and he began to say, come, come, come. And then there's this crescendo, man, of this. I'm looking at the book and I see it as a picture. But Jesus is like, he said, I could feel when death fades. And he said, you come with me. And he took it on. He took death. And then he said, it is finished. Come on. Amen. This is what I truly, Derek Prince writes this in Bought with Blood, this, another wonderful book, wonderful book. But Derek Prince writes this. He says, you know, when Jesus died, he said it was natural for them to cut them on the side and, and see if they were alive. But what they would do is they would break their legs. And so because when you're on a cross, you literally suffocate because you can't push yourself up, right? So they break their legs, okay? So what would happen is they would hang on the cross and then they would break their legs. And so they would break their legs so they couldn't push themselves up because what would literally happen is they would hang and they would suffocate and then they would push themselves up and go, <gasps> That's how they died. And remember what it says in, in, I believe it's the book of Luke, when they said they marveled because Jesus was already dead. This is what Derek Prince writes, and this is so powerful. He said, Jesus died before everybody else did because literally he was pushed down by the weight of sickness and sin and pain. That's why when they went and they stabbed him in the side, that blood of water fell out. He died literally from the weight of sin. When he said, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? At that point, the God of all creation could not look on sinful man and Jesus at that time had taken all the sin of the world upon himself and God turned his back and he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then he gave up the ghost. Think about that. Think about that for a minute. Amen. He said, my God, my God. But understand, this is why we have the cross. Surely, he has borne our grief and carried our pain. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God, a man of sorrows. But he was wounded for our transgressions, and he was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes were healed. Understand what the cross really means. I know it's a nice piece of jewelry, as long as you don't have him still on it. Amen? It's a beautiful piece of jewelry. I love, you know, people that wear the cross. Amen? As long as they're not, you know, acting like a fool and making Christians look bad. Amen? If they do that, I want to jerk that cross right off their neck and slap them upside the head with it. <clears throat> but understand. The cross was a powerful thing for us. The cross was what we needed for now. We, we are not going to, there's no sickness in heaven. There's no pain in heaven. There's no sorrow in heaven. We're not going to need that in heaven. What we're going to do is just, just stroll across heaven with, with our loved ones and those that we, we love dearly. Amen? But I want to read this last verse to you. I, I'll tell you. If this verse was not so long, I would say, put this on my headstone. If all of you are still here, when I go home to be with Jesus, one of you need to write this down and say, this is what, I want to, this is what we need to read at Pastor's Homegoing when I'm 95. <clears throat> 
Everybody turn with me to or look at your phone or whatever. I always use the Brown translation. Some of the people have, have kicked out the Brown ones is the version Bible. Um, some people have kicked out the Passion Translation off of their website because they, you know, I, I don't know, you know, religious or whatever. I, I don't know what they say. I try not to get into all that stuff. But I love this second, or Colossians chapter 2 <clears throat> in the Passion Translation. I've read it here before. And think about this. I want you to understand this is what happened at the cross. Amen. Colossians chapter 2, verse 14 and 15. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record and the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. Now, now, if, if probably most of you know what I'm talking about, okay? But if you've never had any kind of court problems, sometimes you may not know what that means, amen? Because I've been indicted, amen, amen? I've had legal violations, amen, that were on our record, on my record, amen? But here's what it says next. He erased it all. He erased it all, our sins, our stained soul. He deleted it all, and they cannot be retrieved. Mm. They cannot be retrieved. What sin? What record? Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Amen. Amen. Then Jesus made a public spectacle. Let me explain this to you. I love this because, because here, here, here's what he did. When in the time of the Romans and in the time of all the, the, the different kings, what the kings would do is when they would get um, when they would they would get all the stuff from the other kingdom, and what they would do is they would have a procession of of prisoners of war that would walk with them through the city, and everybody would stand and cheer. And they would usually have the old king or the king that they took over. They would usually have him with them, and sometimes they put his eyes out so he couldn't see, and he, they would lead him through the city, and everybody would cheer and everybody would clap because that's what they would do. Well, this is exactly what Jesus did to sin. Here's what it says. It says, Then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness. Now, let me say that again because I don't know if you caught what I just said. He said he made a public spectacle of all the principalities and powers of darkness. What are all the principalities and powers of darkness? What are they? Their fear, their doubt, their worry, their broke. Come on, somebody, amen. Their, 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 their addiction, their, their, you know, all those things, amen. Those are all the powers of darkness, amen. What did he do? He made a public spectacle of all the powers of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and power to accuse us. He did that. He did that. He did that. He took it all away. He just said, come on. Come on. I want to show you to everybody else. Here. If, 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 I love it. Because this is what I picture in my, in my demented head. This is what I picture. Amen. A little boy named David that goes and kills a giant. Amen. He takes a big old sword and he goes, whoo. Cuts his head off, picks his head up, and goes, <laughs> principalities and powers, rulers of the darkness, look at, look, look, the Peter of public spectacle now. Huh? I got his head. Amen? And by the power of the cross, 
Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. Uh, again, I got a crazy mind, but I remember there were times, man, when, when you know, I was bad. I, I, you know, I, I was a bad kid. You know, sometimes I was a bad kid. Sometimes I had to be carried out of junior church because I wouldn't leave. Amen? Right? I wouldn't go on my own. But I remember there was a couple times, I was going to use an example, but I don't know anybody that would, that would be able to stand this. But I remember there was a couple times where, where somebody would come in, like the pastor or my Uncle Jay, and he would grab me by the ear, and he would twist my ear, and then I would have to follow him like this. Come on. Into the big church, where mom and dad would look, on, look and go, you're going to get it when you get home. I knew what that meant. And there wasn't no altar call in the world that would make them forget that. <laughs> Nothing. Amen? Nothing in the world. But that's what I picture Jesus doing. Is going, come here. Come here. Let me lead you around as a prisoner. Let me lead you around and show everybody. This is no longer relevant. This does not, no longer, will no longer hurt you. This will no longer cause you pain. This will no longer cause you sickness. This will no longer cause you fear. You don't have to fear death anymore. You don't have to fear what you've been fearing before. Let me show you. This right here is irrelevant in your life. Amen? What you need to do is begin to walk in the, will, uh, in the will of God and walk in the promises of God and understand that he led them around in triumph, amen, proving that, hey, I am not your prisoner. It may have, may have looked like that on Saturday. It may have looked like that at 2 o'clock on Saturday, but by 3 o'clock, glory to God, I said it is finished, it was done. There was a fight and I won and it is over, glory to God. And let me walk you around and show you I'm not your prisoner, come here. Come here, I got you. Come here. Understand what we are celebrating Friday. Some people say, oh, I'm so sad that the cross happened. I'm not. I'm not. Because the lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. It was all set up to that time. In the perfect time, Christ died for us. In perfect timing. It was perfect timing. Jesus was born, amen, and 30 years he walked and nobody knew who he was. But the last three years they began to, you know, do things that were crucifying and all those things. The Romans had, you know, had, had taken a, a foothold in, in Jerusalem, a foothold in, in the whole, actually, of the whole Middle East, amen, had taken a foothold. And at the perfect time Jesus came and died for our sins. The perfect time he came and died so that we could have life. Yes. Amen. Let's all stand tonight. Amen. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Victory. Amen. Amen. I heard somebody tell me one time, they said, the priest that would offer the sacrifice became the sacrifice. He became the sacrifice. He who knew no sin became sin for us. So yes. that we, through his righteousness, might be called children of God. Think about that. I don't know about you, but I'm so grateful for Easter. I'm so grateful. So grateful for the cross. I, 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 I'm just, uh, man, I better stop. I'm going to pray, okay? Because <laughs> we got to go home. I know. It's almost 9 o'clock. Father, I love you. Lord God, I am so grateful. And as the old song says, one day when I was lost, you 
dying upon the cross. It's your blood that gives me strength. It's your blood that gives me life. It's your blood that took my place in the redeeming sacrifice and washes me whiter than snow. We love you, Father. We thank you, Father, that the work on the cross is for every single one of us. We bless you tonight, Father. We praise you tonight, Jesus. Thank you for your people, God. Because, God, you died for all of us. You died for those that did not even know you. You died while we were still in our sin, God. You died for us. We honor you. We praise you, Father. Amen, amen, amen. We love y'all.